Hey everybody, thanks for checking another video. So in this video, I'm gonna go over my favorite Easter eggs that I've added to my website over the years. Uh, my website's dustinbrett.com and it's currently been nominated for a Webby for uh, best personal website, which I'm pretty proud about. And uh, yeah, with that out of the way, let's just check out these features we got here. Um, so there's quite a few of them, let's, let's get into them. One of the ones that I did for my kids a long time ago was something called uh, Sheep, basically. Uh, and first, the way I had where you can activate it is if you click the, the clock seven times. So let's do it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we should have a sheep appear. There he is. And the sheep will land uh, on the different windows and stuff. And you can move him around so we can drag the sheep and put him over here. And you see here, if I open a window and then I grab the sheep and put him here, he'll actually fall on the window, which is kind of fun. And another cool way to do it, and this is a call out to the movie The Net, is if you hold Control Shift and you press the Pi symbol, It'll open the start menu, but it actually spawns another sheep as well. And then one other way I have to do it, uh, and this is kind of an Easter egg in itself, is if you press Shift F10, it'll open up a terminal. And, oh, I got the sheep caught in my window here. <laughs> and then in the terminal, you can actually type sheep to get another sheep. And one of the fun things about this, uh, oh, yeah, and also some of the times you don't get a sheep. Sometimes you get a penguin, sometimes you get a fox. I think statistically you're 70% likely to get a sheep. Um, so, but one thing we can do is if we do sheep and then we put a number, we can get a lot of sheep. So let's do a hundred sheep and see what it looks like. And you see, then they all kind of come in from all over the place and you'll get, you get more of the, stati the statistical ones. So you get like about 70% sheep, 10% cats, a couple of foxes, that kind of thing. Um, so this is one of my funnest ones and my kids love to play with this and catch all the different things. Uh, I'm going to go to the start menu and press the power button here just to reset it. Cause those sheep can kind of slow things down after a while. So that's one of them. Another thing people might see when they go to my site is they think, oh, this is a cool wallpaper, but this is the only one. Uh, but that's not the case. If you right click on the menu, you can change the background and there's all sorts of ones I have. Uh, so this APOD one is the astronomy photo of the day. It looks like it's the eclipse. Uh, coastal landscape is, is one I've always liked. That's kind of like a, I don't know what you'd call that, like a Van Gogh-ish tree, Windows XP style thing. Hexelis is one I really like that's uh, almost like neural net driven and kind of uh, each little cell reacts to the cell beside it. This matrix one is a great recreation that someone has done uh, that I'm a big fan of. And there's actually a 3D version of it as well. Uh, another, I have my picture slideshow. I've thought about making this my the main one that you see when you first come to the site, but I've always liked the kind of the 3D waves one. Uh, and then finally I have one called stable diffusion. I'm not gonna click it right now cause it's extremely slow to load. It takes like downloads like two gigabytes of model data. But that actually is like the stable diffusion AI art generator, and it will make wallpapers based on prompts that are in the pictures folder under a file called prompts.json. So I've only got, I think, like six, six different prompts right now. But those prompts make some pretty cool pictures, and you could add and change your own, and it's an, it works offline once you have the two gigabyte model data. So that's kind of another neat one. And I'll just put it back to, uh, we'll put it to matrix here for a second, just because that's kind of a cool one. Uh, hopefully it's not too pixelated. Actually, it might get a little pixelated uh, depending on how YouTube takes it. So let's just put it back to waves. So those are some cool ones. So now as far as the wallpapers, I actually have some other little Easter egg things. So I have a, an app called the browser app, which is kind of emulates a pretend browser. And within that, you can kind of inception style open my website again. And one thing is that it detects if you're opening it inside itself and it shows you a different version sometimes. So for the wallpaper, it used the uh, wireframe version. And if we were to switch this to say the, my slideshow, it actually inverts all my slideshow pictures. So there's my wedding photo, but it looks a little weird inverted. Um, and for the matrix ones, it actually does it in reverse. So you see how the code's moving up instead of down. And it's the same with the 3D one, it moves backwards instead of uh, forward. So that's kind of a little subtle hint uh, or subtle little thing. And then another cool ones I have. So let's say I've got video here we open up a video, uh, let's say of my brain scan or my, or when I was in Bollywood and I will do the brain scan one. I don't want to get any copyright claims or nothing. So if you right click this and you press set as background, it can actually have my a video as the background, which is kind of neat. Um, and it's not something I mentioned necessarily on the site, but it, it works. And you can do the same with, uh, just like how I have a picture slideshow, you could just pick pictures. So I could pick like my Vancouver picture and make that the picture too. So that's another thing is pictures and videos can be set as the wallpaper, which is kind of neat. Another thing for these videos too, is that I actually add the, have the ability to convert the videos. So you could convert my videos or you could drag in your own. Same with pictures. If you right click it here, you can actually do convert. And let's say right now it's an MP4 
uh, but you could convert it to, let's say, uh, a WebM if you want. Uh, I don't have a progress bar for this yet. That's one of the few things I haven't added yet is a progress bar when it's converting. So you can't really tell it's converting. It's just like, did I do it? Um, but momentarily it does create the, the next icon like beside it that's .webm and will work. Oh, although it actually, <laughs> the browser kind of froze a little bit. That's another thing is it can hang the browser a little bit too, that feature, because it's uh, it's because of the nature of the browser is type, typically single threaded. This isn't a multi-threaded uh, converter. So it has that one problem. Uh, and we'll give it another second to see if it goes. And if it doesn't, then uh, maybe we'll just move on to the next one here because it doesn't seem to be converting. So it's a bit slow. I think especially WebM, like I might've picked a bad conversion one. Maybe AVI would have been a bit faster. Uh, and I think in the console, you can actually see the progress. Oh yeah, it's totally frozen. All right, well, let's not worry about that. You can just simply press refresh and it uh, typically recovers. And if it doesn't, one thing you can do is just open another tab and there you go. Then it's kind of recovers itself. Oh no. And then I close the thing though, but that, that won't be uh that won't help. So yeah, if you close it, then you gotta open again. There we go, back open. Uh, so be careful with converting video. It can be hit and miss sometimes. Uh, speaking of video and pictures, uh, I could demo the picture one too, actually. The picture one's a lot better. So let's say that same picture, we we can convert that from, what was it, a JPEG? We could convert that to like a PNG, let's say. And I think that actually does multi-threaded too. There we go, much faster. So pictures are a lot easier to convert because, uh, and a picture's worth a thousand words anyway, so you're already pretty good. Um, next up, another thing I don't really mention too much, but I've added support for is, well, this is a two-parter. So first off, I can do drag and drop in both directions, which is kind of cool. So I can actually, if we reset here, if we open up my pictures, let's say, and I see a picture here, I could take this picture and drag it off of the, the window into my operating system and it'll actually download it here. And you'll see like the little uh, download bar at the top for Chrome trigger to download and, and it works. Uh, and vice versa on Windows, I could take a picture and I could drag it into the desktop. So you see there a picture just appeared. I actually took that from my operating system and just drag it right onto my page. Um, and this brings me to the next like Easter egg beyond drag and drop is that uh, this is actually called the JPEG XL, which is something Chrome doesn't even support. And I'm in Chrome, but I can view JPEG XL because I've added support on my website to view these special formats. Uh, and there's a few other ones. Like this is another format here called QOI. I just dragged it on again, uh, quite okay image format. Again, that I have, I've added support for. And I have another one, I don't have it right here. H, oh yeah, I also have TIFF too. I think TIFF support, yeah, TIFF is another one that isn't supported natively, but I've added support for. And finally, I've got the HEIC image support. Uh, and this one's a little slower to load. There we go, it loaded. But these, uh, I can't even remember what it's called, high efficiency image something. I don't know what the C stands for, and I made that up. But as you can see here, these are four image formats that aren't supported by Chrome, but you can view in my website. So if you have an image and you just want to see it and you can't get it working anywhere, you can just drag it onto my site, which is kind of another cool thing. Uh, back to the browser. If you open up like one of my blog posts, if any of the links lead to a, a site that my browser can support, then it actually is clickable. So let's say here I have a little link to a Wikipedia article. And if I click it, instead of opening in a new Chrome tab, it opens in my like browser and it's able to open the real Wikipedia page, which is, I think is pretty cool as well. Um, and in that, we can show a few more things that the browser has here. So one thing I've added is Dino Game, which people know is like the Chrome offline game. Uh, so that's kind of a fun thing where you can play Dino Game on my site as well. And uh, it's not too hard. And it actually keeps the high score as well. So, oh, I wasn't looking at the screen and I missed it. So that's one kind of cool thing. So the high score is 80 now. Um, another cool one I've added is, is what I call like index of. It's kind of like the Apache directory listing when, when you used to have a web server back in the day, but you don't have an index file and it just shows this directory listing. I've essentially recreated that internally so that this actually maps directly to the actual folder. So you could see here, if I were to make a file right there, a new text document, and then if I refresh here, it'll actually show the new text document. And it's the same one. And you can edit files on my page. So you can say hello, although I spelled hello wrong. That's okay. And now, so you see it says zero kilobytes, but if we refresh now, it says six kilobytes because it was six letters. And if you open it, there it is. So that's kind of another neat little trick that I don't really uh, call out, but it's something it can do. Um, now here's an, here's another cool one. So people know that Doom is on my website. You can play Doom on my website just by clicking Doom right there, which is always fun. But what a lot of people don't know is that if you right click Doom, you can do open file location and you can actually see that Doom is just one of, of 13 shareware DOS games that I have on my site. These are all my favorite games that I grew up with as a kid. 
Biomenace, Blakestone, Cyberpuck, Duke Nukem 3D, Duke Nukem 1, Duke Nukem 2. Those are classics, so I had them all. Uh, Doom, as we know. Jazz Jackrabbit, Keen, Commander Keen 1 and 4, uh, Raptor, which is like a, a fighting, or like a plane game, Sky Roads, and Wolfenstein, I believe that one is. And those are the kind of games I grew up with, and, and shareware is meant to be shared, is my thinking. So I was happy to add those to my site. That's another one. Uh, going back to the terminal, there's some other cool things I have. So I've actually kind of got like a what's called system path, where in the system folder, any any WebAssembly WASM executables that you put in here, it can automatically be ran. And I've got a couple. So I've got ones like Kause, Fortune, Lolcat, and you can actually pipe them together. So if you do Fortune, that's the one that kind of gives you, it just gives you like a little fortune, basically. It gives you a different one every time. And what you can do, so you can do fortune and you can pipe in cow say, and now the fortune is in the cow, in the cow's speech bubble. And then you can even pipe it one step further and you can lolcat it and you can get some color there. And that works for anything. So let's say, if you do LS or DIR, you can see the directory listing and you can actually do DIR lolcat and you can actually see the directory listing colorful, which is kind of neat, I thought. I liked it anyways. Um, some other cool things you can do. So I've I've got an x86 emulator and I've actually internalized the running of Linux. So now if you just do Linux here, it'll actually open up the x86 emulator right away and give you access to Linux. So this is like actual Linux here versus my faux Linux, I'm calling it. Uh, next thing here in the terminal, you can actually even check the weather too, which is kind of neat uh, with color it adds as well. This is a free service that, that has and attracts it based on your IP address. Uh, it's not something that I'm running in the back end, but hey, it works, it's free. So I thought it was cool. Another one I've recreated is NeoFetch. For people that know NeoFetch, it kind of just tells you the statistics or, or tells you information about the operating system. And I've basically recreated this. These are all legit. These things actually are the real numbers. So it's not fake in any way. Uh, but I thought that was kind of cool as well. Another one I added. Um, also, for people that don't know, you can run Python here. So you can do Python 1 plus 1. Uh, and you can run .py files as well. But all the library, just for the basic libraries that aren't internet connected, no add-ons or packages, just the basic Python, it can run. And it's the same with uh, JavaScript. Uh, separate from eval, I've actually got a separate JavaScript interpreter called QuickJS. Um, so these are two different programming language interpreters that are running actually there. Uh, I'm just doing one plus one, so it doesn't look huge, but you could do a lot more with that if you wanted to. Uh, I've also got things like NS lookup, where I've set up DNS lookup via uh, DNS over HTTPS, I believe it's called. Uh, and this is another free service. Uh, this one's running from Cloudflare. And I actually have a backup where it'll go to the Google one if Cloudflare was down. So this is an, a way where you could look up the, the DNS information for any domain. Uh, I also have IP config, which will give you your actual IP. Uh, I'm thinking not to run that actually, because that will show my real IP. So we'll skip that one for now. Um, I've also got Git here, although I don't have any good examples of Git. Let's, hmm, I'm trying to think of a good Git. Uh, I guess I could go to my, my, my page here. Like this is my repo. And if I just copy my repository here and say clone, that's like a Git URL. And then in here, you can actually, like, let's go to the desktop. It's kind of a big repo, so we'll see how well it clones. But if we do git clone and we just paste in a git URL, we say allow to allow pasting, it will actually clone git and communicate properly with git. And you can see here, it's actually beginning to clone my repository. Um, it's a big repository, so I'm not sure how, how much we want to clone of that. It might take a little bit of time. Let's just refresh it and, and let not even let finish. Uh, but that shows that idea there. Um, another thing I have is IPFS support. So if you know of IPFS URLs, you can actually, if you right click on the start menu, you can also press run. Uh, and it can also be, I think control shift R, yeah, also opens it. And you can just directly paste in IPFS URLs using the IPFS protocol, where it's like IPFS colon forward slash forward slash. And if you just paste one of those in there, it'll actually grab the, date, the IPFS data from an IPFS proxy and download the file. So you see, in this case, it's a picture. Uh, I've used this example before because I thought it was kind of funny. Um, this, you are a ghost driving a meat covered skeleton made from stardust, riding a rock floating through space. Fear nothing. There's some, some good points there, which I thought were cool. So that's kind of another little one I have. Another fun one I have, like if you go to GitHub here and you right click, oh, it doesn't show the right click menus on my stream, but on my website it does. So if you right click, you'll see here there's a menu. And these two bottom buttons here are familiar to people that use Chrome at least, view page source and inspect, but I've kind of hijacked those a little bit. So now if you do view page source, it actually opens in my own internal editor, Monaco editor, but that is the real page source. That's the index file. 
Um, looks kind of gross when it's minified though. And another one here is inspect where you would expect it to be dev tools, but I actually have my own local version of dev tools. And this is very internal, like it legitimately works. So if you go into elements here, you can actually inspect the real elements and see the real page. Like let's say this button here, and you can see all this, all the information about how that button actually works, its labels, that kind of thing. So that's kind of a, that's like super inception in some ways, if you're a developer. Um, some other cool ones I have. So if we just open up the My PC folder, or actually, if we open up the start menu and go to my documents folder, I have a few other things there like flash files. That's not something I kind of make it clear, but I support flash as well. So you can open up all sorts of fun flash files and you can drag on your own. Uh, and I think you can run multiple. So I could have like strong bad. I could have the badger thing. I could have the fake windows RG. I could have the port the fake or it's not fake portal, but it's just like the flash version. I mean, flash is pretty much dead nowadays, but still works fine on my site. So you can run as many flash games or whatever it is you want. Uh, and then speaking of games, another thing I have in that documents folder is I have under the games folder, like if you go into start and you go games, there are some listed there, but there's not, but it's kind of like sparse in, in that it's only like, what is it? Six or seven or something like that. But I actually have a lot more. So separate from those DOS bundles that we discussed already, there's also a ROMs folder. And I support a lot of different emulators. Like uh, this is a Nintendo one here. And all of these ROMs are like free to use ones. Uh, but the emulation is is real. So this is like emulating like a real Nintendo game. And you could put other real Nintendo games that you own on there as well. Um, and I have all sorts of ones for that. This is Game Boy Advanced. Uh, this is, what is SMC? I think that's Sega. Uh, Atari 2600, Genesis, Nintendo DS. Uh, and I think I have like 10 or 11 other uh, emulators on there that can, can run. Uh, and then finally, at least it was finally on my list, there's a lot of other little things that I haven't mentioned here, uh, which is part of the fun of Easter eggs is to kind of find that stuff yourself. But another one here, like I have Winamp uh, coming from WebAmp, uh, which is kind of cool. People know about that now that I've shown. But some something I didn't mention is that in the music folder, I have a few fun music things. Um, so one of them is the, the it really whips the llama's ass kind of thing, which is the when you used to install Winamp, this would always play at the start. Uh, so I've added that little bit of audio. And I've also got uh, streaming streams as well. Like if you click on the start button here, or sorry, the search button, there is like in my recent, I always have this stream. And, and that's what I have going on my computer behind me, usually just as my background music. Uh, and you can click that to open it. But one thing that might not be as known is that not only do I have the Winamp player, but I also have the Milk Drop uh, visualization, uh, which I use all, every day. So if you right click in Winamp and you go Milk Drop, you see it opens up a visualizer as well. And you think, oh, like that's pretty cool. Well, if you right click it, you can actually make it the wallpaper and it'll show the music as it changes. And this will fill this, this jumps through like 120 different visualization presets every 10 or 15 seconds or something like that. And if you right click on the background here, you can disable that to have it go back to the little window, uh, which I thought was uh, was kind of nice too, just as like a little add on so that even the website knows that you're using it as a wallpaper and has the ability to change it. Um, but yeah, that's that's like a short little bit of my list of the the kind of Easter eggs that you can see on my site. And uh, and like I said, oh, let me jump back one more time. So like I said, I, I am nominated for Webby. So if you see here under the vote for us, uh, and if you think this is a cool site and you want to vote for me to support me, there's still about a week or so left to vote for me. So you just click here and you can vote for mine, Datal OS, uh, if you like it. So yeah, please, please support me in that way if you think it's cool. Other than that, though, yeah, thanks for checking out this video and see you in the next one. Bye.